met so many people sharing each other a story and, and journey towards our dream meaningful job. I'm really happy to have her here today and share her experience so far, but it's probably the beginning of a very long journey. Yeah, I think so uh, too. So why don't you share a little bit with us who you are actually to like to present yourself and uh, and where you are actually in this journey towards your uh, yeah. your meaningful job. Yeah, of course. Uh, thank you for having me in the first place. Um, well, my name is Gurprit, uh, but I'm from Sweden, from Stockholm. That's where I'm born and raised. Um, my family is from India, so I have very strong um, Indian heritage. But also, uh, since I grew up and was born in Sweden, I also have a very strong uh, Swedish culture. I had been unemployed for quite some time, for almost a year and a half. And now I'm actually working for a Teleperformance, uh, which is an international company. And uh, I'm working with a Google project. So more specifically, I'm working with Google Ads. And um, yeah, so I have customers from the Swedish market and I help them with their Google Ads. So that's where I am right now. Would you say that uh, deciding to be unemployed was your first step towards uh, achieving your, uh, your meaningful uh career job or um no i think it came earlier than that uh, i remember well i grew up in a pretty traditional family so i had the the goals were pretty much set up for you you need to study you need to become a doctor and then you need to get married and have children so i think early on i was just stuck in that milestone plan that everyone the society has laid out for you um, but for me it was when i reached um, I had studied, I had a good job, and that's when I really noticed that, okay, something really needs to change. Um, so that's when I made the conscious decision to actually move to another country. And um, yeah, I think that was actually the first uh, stage of my journey. And, and wh where do you feel you are now in this, uh, in this process? What, what has happened <laughs> from the moment you have decided to take that first step and change country to where you are mm -hmm. now? I think a lot has happened. I've worked on myself so much. And I think Alex put it so uh, beautifully that we're always in a transition phase. And I feel that too, um, more now than ever before. Uh, but right now what has changed compared to where I was when I was in Sweden is that I actually know myself now. I know what I want. I know what my values are. And I need. I know that it's, it, you can make a change. You're not, I have a friend, his status, status is, you're not a tree, so move. Um, so I think for me, it's really interesting to just know the fact that I can, I can do something, I can reach my goals and moving here, meeting among others, you, Martina, you, everyone showed me that it can be done. So I think that's the difference now. I have I have the knowledge about myself and I also have the courage to um, proceed. It feels like you have gone through so much. Uh, also in identifying what is actually your purpose, which are your values, which are those values that you want to stick to in your mm -hmm. current job and in the future one. Uh, has there been any specific situation or experiences that consciously you have decided to take on in order to get closer in the definition of, of your purpose or what you actually want to do in the long, in the long run? How did you get yeah, to that uh, clarity? I think the first step was really deciding that I really need to get to know myself, what it is that I want for myself and not just uh, go ahead with life based on what my parents want for me or what society wants of me. So I think that was step number one. So that's really why I moved also. Um, the second step would be, I think, maybe quitting my job uh, because I knew that I really had to just put myself out there and see what happens. Um, so that was one major turning point. Um, but then after I, I quit, there was the pandemic. So it was very hard to get a job. Um, so I was unemployed. But during that time of unemployment, I really, I overtook like this huge personal journey where I really worked on myself and the past experiences that I needed to really resolve and really get to know who I am, what I want. 
Um, and then I really, during this time, I really connected the dots between my interest for environmental uh, sustainabil sustainability and uh, being plastic free, not uh, harming animals. Um, I connected those dots to the fact that it could really be something that I needed to pursue to feel fulfilled. So I think that was also a very huge step for me to see that it's not just a hobby, it can actually be a meaningful career for me and I can thrive in it and be successful too. Well, quitting the job is scary. <laughs> Yes, it? definitely. I, yeah, I, I, I've gone through this process uh, myself, and I think most of the people that are listening to us today or in the future uh, reviewing this session probably had the same, uh, the mm -hmm. same feeling. You know, the same fear. Yeah. How yeah. how how scary has it been for you? And do do you regret that now looking back? Oh, I definitely do not regret it. I think it was the best thing I ever did, even if it was hard financially and mentally too, uh, to be an unemployed. But it was very scary. I remember I had to go into the office in, in Stockholm and uh, sign the papers. And I was so nervous. A part of me was just what telling myself, asking myself, what are you doing? This is a good job by all definitions, most definitions, this is a very, very good job. I, I mean, I had the fancy title, I had the work laptop, I had the freedom, um, the financial bit was there, but um, still, and my parents were also like, why are you going to quit? This is everything that you need. But I knew for myself that this is not exactly what I need. So that made it easier to just go in and sign the papers and say, thank you, but I need to move on now. Yeah a very big first important step to get closer to that job if i understand you correctly that hopefully in the future will be much more connected to having uh, an environmental uh, impact yeah yes. but today you are mentioning that you are actually working in the, in the tech industry so if i think about it tech industry environmental impact so, so how, how does it feel being in this transition period and uh, what what is actually this job you have decided to accept right now, what is this job giving you that will actually help you to get a little bit closer to your final destination? Mm -hmm. Well, it, it is a part a tech job, but it's also a lot of marketing. Um, so I, when I got this job, I was offered two other jobs at the same time. And I actually chose this one over the others because um, because of the journey I had taken so far, the personal journey, I knew that there were some things, some areas of myself that I really needed to work on, maybe strengthen a bit. And that was actually the key points in my decision-making. So I knew that this job could make, help me in becoming a more strategic thinker because uh, that's what I do. I work with Google, uh, Google ads. So I help people with their marketing. So I really tell them that this could be something for you. If you want to, if you want your business to succeed, you should think it this way, this could benefit you. You should stay away from this. Um, so yeah, definitely becoming a more strategic thinker um, as well as marketing in general. I think if I want to pursue a, a career in sustainability, environmental work, I think there needs to be a shift in mindset. And I think knowing or having the skill of marketing uh, would only help me in maybe getting my message across in the future when I am working with something that is my, my dream job. Mm. And um, right now it's also about taking space, using the voice I have, um, believing in myself that what I have to say, it's, it is important because I, not only do I have the qualifications, but I have the experience and I also have the soft skills to actually um, sit in a meeting and tell people, uh, give them advice about what they should do with their businesses. So, yeah. yeah. I can really hear that you are very, very connected to yourself. Now, I mean, in order to be able really to, to accept that job that is not the job that you want, uh, uh, and to compromise on that, I guess it requires a lot of self-knowledge and self-understanding and yeah. a clear understanding of where you want to go. So you, you clearly have accepted this job uh, uh, for a specific reason. It's actually yes. helping you to get where you want. Any specific practical tips you can, uh, you can share? I think the first journey would definitely, or the first step for me was definitely just getting to know myself. And I think that would be a great 
a starting point for anyone who's trying to find a more meaningful career, uh, just to get to know yourself, what your values are, uh, what do you stand for, what do you want to see happen in the world. And I think that for me was, it was major and um, because I never thought about these things. Everything was just mapped out for me. So I never really had to think about them. Um, so definitely just get to know yourself and then get to know your own values. Um, and once you know that, I think it's really important that you live those uh, every day because the world is a tough place. And uh, if you allow it, it's gonna, you're gonna get disconnected from your values. So I think that's why I really try on a day-to-day -day basis to really live my own values. And um, it's hard, especially when you work at an organization like Google, because you have your targets that need to be met, but you also have your values. And I think deciding to take this job, I knew that I, I cannot make up my own rules. I do need to follow the guidelines and the targets that have been set for me, but I really try to find a, a middle ground or common ground where I can actually do my job in a good way. I can reach my targets, but I can also bring a value to the customer and while also um, staying true to my own values. And I think the trick for me has been to inform myself of, of the product. What is it that I want to do? What is it that the customer wants and needs? And then just trying to find alternate solutions uh, rather than just following um, the s suggestions or recommendations or the guidelines blindly. But yeah. Uh, so yeah, well, what do you do? <laughs> oh, well, I, I, did, I went through the same personal journey as well. Uh, definitely mm -hmm. of getting myself better and uh, invest in some good career coaching. So once I got clear where I wanted to go, I, I set a plan. And in order to fulfill that plan, I found an accountability body mm -hmm. that can really help me stay, keep staying connected to, to my journey, you know, and not to lose, uh, lose sight of what I want and where I want to, to be. And I've been started practicing sport a lot that may sounds strange but uh, I started running running a lot for me was my sort of meditation I've been reflecting on myself and what I wanted to do so much throughout all these <laughs> kilometers I was running so <laughs> if you need time for yourself and for reflection I definitely recommend people to start running that was my my personal meditation and also you know there are targets that we need to, yeah. to match and uh, how can we meet the target and still staying uh, stick to our value sometimes it's not easy for particularly if there is an unhealthy working atmosphere. I, I personally have been asked to be involved in setting up the, the culture of the organization I was working, uh, I'm working for. It is a rather young startup. So I've been asking to be involved in that and the running sessions for them. Sometimes it's difficult, you know, just not to following blindly what the manager, uh, management uh, wants. And as you described being stay core to what the customer really needs, I yeah. think it's, uh, yeah. uh, it's very important. I, I wonder if, guys, you have any any question for uh, for group rate? I had two questions. One is, uh, you mentioned that, you know, everything was fine, fantastic, approval of parents, and the next day you're in Malaga with other job. I feel yeah. I'm missing a, you know, I understand there's an evolution in your thinking, but there's a moment in which yes. you say, okay, that's enough or something that triggers you that moves that. So I'm missing that bit. And the second question is now mm -hmm. you, you risk being also in another safe job. So what have yeah. you put in your mind a trigger that says, hold on, I need to stop and then make the next shift as well? Well, there was a very, very specific moment, like you say. Um, it was actually, um, I used to work as a quality assurance tester. So I tested software. Um, and I was working as a consultant for a Swedish bank insurance company and uh, they had two buildings in Stockholm and I was sitting out, out on the terrace on one of the buildings looking out to the other building and then I could see just floor after floor window after window of peep people glued to their computers and that's when it hit me like I think the word zombie actually popped up like I'm one of them now what what am I doing? This is, I, I had the feeling that I'm meant for something more. Uh, this can't be it. So that was really a turning point. I had the 
feeling in my gut for a long time, but that was actually a key turning point. Um, and when it comes to your second question, I think what triggers me now when I took this job, I already knew that this is not my so-called end game. I, I knew that this was just a part of my journey, almost a stepping stone. I took the job because I knew that I had certain things to learn. And I also knew that this was, like I said, it would be temporary. I'm, I'm just here to learn and then I will move on to something that is more aligned with my dreams and my values. Question here for me is, do you also um, have also like a vision for yourself and, and career wise? And um, are you trying to strive for this vision that you have in your head? Or you're, you're like a person who trying to go to go through several stepping stone and to develop this capacity in a way in this time that you can get the best out of it. Um, for me, it, it was also a part of my journey, just visualizing how, how do I see myself in the future? Uh, when I say I want something that meets my values, what is that? What does that actually mean for me? Um, and I've tried to envision myself in different roles, uh, doing different tasks. Um, and what I've co come up with is it's really not, I don't have a just a very particular role I would like to be in. I think it's more about the impact it has. And uh, I would like to have some work with something that actually makes an impact, makes the world a, big, a better place, whether that's in IT for a company. Uh, for instance, there's a company called EcoElf. So they do sustainable clothing. I have thought about working for, uh, for them. And then also I'm very interested in sustainable agriculture. So there are different parts, but I'm also a very structured person. I like plans. I like to see, okay, what are the steps? So I think it's a combination of both for me. And also I believe in the universe and it's just moving you towards what you want. So that's also, I, I believe in science. And uh, so, yeah, it's a combination of all three elements. Thank you. Great. Any final uh, reflection, Google Prep? Yeah, I would like to ask everyone participating if, like, I've, I've given you my journey and what my doubts are maybe a bit. Uh, so I, would, I was wondering if you have any um, tips for me of what I could do, where I could potentially look, uh, find a good job that would maybe match my values a bit more. If there's maybe someone who has taken this journey already. Um, so yeah. I'm open to suggestions. The first thing that comes to mind is that um, one, like how wonderful that you have this field that you're really passionate about. But like in the like in the Baha'i faith, when we have like this framework that is given to us um, by the principles of Baha'u'llah, um, they have, I guess, various applications to different fields. And some fields struggle with particular principles more than others. And they take shape in, in certain patterns and trends over the, like at the very forefront of the field. And so like when we think about sustainability, I wonder whether there, whether you know of like what principles come to the very forefront of those endeavors and how the business field is struggling to implement them in, in practice. When it comes to principles, I do have somewhat an idea of what I need to be in place for me to feel feel fulfilled, but I'm also aware of the fact that we live in a world that's driven by economic growth. Um, so there needs to be some sort of economic growth, but also uh, the focus needs to be with um, sustainability in whether it's in fashion, whether it's in green energy, or if it's in the food sector, I need to feel that it's actually making the world better. And it's it's quite difficult because I don't have the exact role I'm striving for, but I do know what kind of feeling I want. So it's it's really hard also because you're basing everything on a, on a feeling. Yeah, it's, it's tricky. I'm going to think about that one. Thank you so much again, Corporate. Really insightful. Thank you. Yeah, and thank, thank you, you so much for having thank me. everyone for for sharing. <laughs>